to deny a people the right to self-determination for well on a hundred years is to subject them to slavery, to take away the resources of a people and refuse to give them anything in return is to subject them to slavery, to take away the land of a people who depend solely on land for their survival and refuse to pay them compensation is to subject them to genocide. The Niger Delta is becoming a battleground. People are being driven from their homes. I mean, look at that. It's going to be scarred for life. Oil workers are being kidnapped. These guys had AK-47, yes sir, and, and some 50 caliber. Along the Delta waterways of southern Nigeria, armed rebels have declared war. What belongs to me does not come to me. So I have to fight to get it, by all means. If it is, it, even if it will take my life. At stake is the world's most desired commodity, oil. I accuse the ethnic majority who run Nigeria of practicing genocide against the Ogoni people. I accuse the oil companies which prospect for oil in Ogoni of encouraging genocide against the Ogoni people. I accuse Shell and Chevron of practicing racism against the Ogoni people because they do in Ogoni what they do not do in other parts of the world where they prospect for oil. In Nigeria, oil companies often burn off the gas that's found with oil. The flares add to the greenhouse effect. They also release pollutants into the air. Yet we found women from a local village clustered around the flames, using them to make a living. What is this? Tapioca. Tapioca. And it needs to be dried? Yes. And you put it there? Yes. How can you be so close all the time? I mean, I'm, I'm standing here and it's really hot. Very hot. Very hot. <laughs> Do you know that this is bad for you, for your health? We know that it's dangerous, but we are hungry now. And that is fine. You know it's dangerous. We have nothing to do. No farm, nothing. It's so surreal that people are actually making a use of something that is harming them. The devastation of the Ogoni countryside, the complete destruction of the Ogoni ecosystem, the dehumanization of the Ogoni people, the denial to them of education and other health facilities and other social amenities, all these together have led the Ogoni down the way of extinction. Look at that. That is a river load of crude oil. It's just spewed all over this river bank, all down this river. I can see gobloads of the stuff. Actually, I have to say, it feels kind of weird on my fingers, like it's burning. Ten years on, the situation in fact has got worse in the Niger Delta. And the idea for the memorial was basically to um, create a unique piece of public art that would say to Londoners and to Britain and to the world and especially Nigeria, we haven't forgotten this. The story of, of Ken Sarawiwa is part of our story here. This morning in London, the winners of the Remember Sarawiwa Memorial Competition were announced. Artist Sakari Douglas Camp has designed a battered Nigerian bust inscribed with Sarawiwa's words, while Siraj Izzar's work takes the form of three giant carbon molecules. Today saw the unveiling of the first of two memorials to writer and activist Ken Sarawiwa, who was executed by the Nigerian government in 1995. Sculptor Sakari Douglas Camp has created a silver steel Nigerian bust which will appear at sites throughout the UK. Well, this artwork is going to educate. It has words on it. Um, little children are going um, past it, uh, saying Ogoni, which they've never heard of or come across before, and then asking questions about what oil companies are doing. One of the things we've learned in Nigeria today is that there are no small people, that any people carry the same weight 
as others. Whether the people, a population of uh, 10 million, 20 million, or 500,000, it does not matter in the least. That there are no small people. There are no people so small that they can be ignored, either, either by the nationality, the nation in which they live, or even by the world organizations. And the cause of minorities in the world today has been catapulted into global attention just by the activities of people like Ken Sarawiwa, and especially by Ken Sarawiwa. I accuse the Nigerian government and the international, multinational companies which prospect for oil in Ogoni of genocide. I appeal to the international community, to the British government, the American government, the Japanese government, the countries of the European community who buy oil from Nigeria to come now to the aid of the Ogoni people and stop this genocide.